What's up guys, Jacob Wheeler here. We're gonna have a deep dive into top water fishing. Hopefully there's a little bit of something here for you. Okay, okay, before we jump into this subject, because you guys, I'm gonna tell you straight up. Top water fishing is literally like what started my whole love for bass fishing. This right here is like, ooh, ooh, like, Yes, like you see them blow up on a top water, it's amazing. Um, I remember back when I was like 13 years old, I'd go down to the to the, the local little lakes and river, this river river near my house, and I would jump in the boat and fish with you know some some friends. They just they were just like, man, this kid just ate up with top water. It's all I wanted to throw. I, I didn't care if I got if I only got one bite in the day, but as long as it was on a top water, it was worth it. So. My passion goes way far back in the in top water realm. Um, it's just something that I I've just I love and and it, and it stays true to today. There's very few baits that that are so so much fun to throw and, and to get to see them do that. So that being said, we're going to dive into um, several things. I'm going to give it overview for a lot of the the beginners out there that are starting fishing at all. Um, or, or getting in their first tournament or, you know, high school anglers or college anglers. We're going to jump into it all. And the first one, I don't even know where I'm going to start here because like, there's so many things. We're going to, like, sort of just talk about the overview of, like, what each bait sort of does. So let's just start out with, like, one of my favorites is a buzz bait, okay? So a buzz bait, overall, it's not a floating bait. This one right here actually has... It buzzes. I mean, it, it, you know, that blade turns, which ultimately forces it to rise up. It stays on top of that blade is turning and making noise. And then the back where the hook is, is it's underneath the water. And that's, you know, this is the attractant. And then this is what actually they bite. So there's a lot of different buzz baits that come in a lot of different shapes. For me personally, I like putting a trailer on my buzz bait, whether I put a toad style on it or I put some sort of trailer with like two two uh, little kickers. To me, that is what I personally think generates more bites. And when they go up and bite a, here's a buzzbait without a trailer on it. When they bite that, I just don't feel like they have much other than a hook and some skirt. So I don't really, I don't really like that, that, that much. I don't I mean, I'm not saying you can't catch them that way, but personally I prefer it. And I feel like they hold on to it a little bit longer. So. Now, as far as blade color and everything else, I, these are just two gold ones. I doesn't, I don't think it really matters that much. I think the noise of the buzz bait matters a heck of a lot. So, yeah, yeah, she'll 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 catch you a few. Like that's that's important. Like the squeakier, louder buzz baits typically, like I like that. Like and in, in, in this one's actually a buzz bait that that I've been making for a while. It's under Accents brand, but. It's just a really good squeaky buzz bait, and that's what I want. Like, I don't want one to be, like, super subtle, very subtle. Like, I mean, there's times that can work, but most of the time I want a pretty obnoxious, and I want to, to, to attract those fish to sort of see what's going on. So buzz bait fishing can be fun, but the disadvantage on buzz bait fishing is weeds, okay? So your advantage is it's going to be able to go over wood. It's going to be able to go over things fairly sn uh, snag-resistant. It's a single hook, so it's fairly snag resistant overall. Works well, and, it, and like even if you're running over wood, it's gonna go you know over those things fairly well. Um, but it but it does have a negative within weeds because what will happen is the weeds, like say you're in Florida or you're in some of these places, like a lot of like scum in your lakes, and um, the the weeds will actually get between the blade and the rivet, and that ends up typically settling the, the, the blade and the sound. So that's that's a buzz bait. Buzz bait fishing can be really a, a lot of fun and it's definitely one that I, I like to throw it. I always have it tied on just because it's, I can cast it fairly well. I can actually skip this bait with a toad on it. I can skip one. Don't try that first time you go out though. Just it's, It can happen, but it just take work your way up there. Now, there's a lot of things like overall that, you know, a buzz bait catches big fish, it gets bites, but typically I start my top water fishing when the water hits 57 degrees 57 and up i'm going to start throwing my top waters in the fall i'll go down to like the low 50s so that's sort of giving you a time frame water temperature wise of when you can pick a top water up if the fish are shallow there's a good chance that there's going to be some fish up there and that 
typically is a, is a good way to, to generate a big bite as well. So the one thing about topwater fishing is, you know, you have to take your time with the hook set, okay? Like it's easy because it's so visual. It's just a visual bite. A lot of times we have a tough time, and myself included, is setting the hook and, and pulling that bait out of the fish's mouth. So like really is something that's very key in taking your time when you set the hook. So we talked about a buzz bait, second on the list, I'm gonna talk about popping style baits. And, and popping style baits are fairly diverse. <clears throat> I mean, these are three completely different popping styles. Um, there's poppers, there's, there's your skitter pops right here. This is an X pop. And so I wanted to overview this one sort of because it's, it is unique. Um, so they all sort of look semi-similar, but they're, they're all definitely different. And so when I use each one, so um, let's just sort of, this one's super unique. So I'm going to put it down here for right now and I'll talk about that in a second. These are very similar. Um, so this guy is a skitter pop and it's a, it's like a, it's like a splashing um, top water. And what I mean by that is by the way the, the, the popper mouth is, is it sp sprays water a little bit more where this guy right here is more of like, you know, a little bit more rounded. It's more of a chugging, like bloop, 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 bloop. So for me, day in and day out, I like the spitting, um, popping style baits a little bit more just because I feel like it's more natural. Okay. So scenario wise, like for me, I'll throw that like when they're shad spawn and the, and the thread fin are spawning and they're in the water's clean, you know, a spinner bait can be a little bit too obnoxious and that popping style bait, like that little dude right there, generates more bites with the spray because it really imitates that really well, like a small bait fish. Where the chuggers work well is during the spawn, okay? So this is like post spawn, in the fall when they're on smaller bait scenario, where the chugger is more so like during the spawn, you throw it out there next to a, a lay down or a dock and it's bloop, pause, bloop, bloop, pause. So you got to think of a fish that's sitting down there and he's spawning or he just got done spawning just, just directly at or guarding fry. And then here's bloop and it's staying in the strike zone. Bloop, bloop, stay in the strike zone. Bloop. And you're like, you son of, and then you're just looking up there and there's like, you son of a gun, get out of here. And it just keeps on making that noise. They just get frustrated. And that's when I start throw, throwing the chugging style, popping style bait. So that's sort of the scenario between those two. You'll know the difference when you get it out on the water, but that, that there's two that I throw and that's, that's sort of a scenario there. Now, this one right here being a larger popping style bait, it, this is completely different than those two. Now I do throw this during the post spawn is my favorite time. Like spawn, post spawn is phenomenal. This is a walking popper. Okay. What it does more than anything, this is actually a cover pop, hence the name. It really walks in place well. So you have some popping style baits that are really well, they're compact. Like, I mean, it's not compact, like super small, but it, he's big enough where I can make a roll cast to cover. Um, and, and then also, um, but he has big hooks on him. So that's why I like a bigger, so if I'm talking about big fish around cover, um, especially seawalls and docks and things like that, this little dude's really bad to the bone because he he sort of can, I can keep him in place. He's really good around the spawn as well, but he's not, he's different than this because this is sort of an irritating, like the sound is what irritates them to bite this. The, the actual walking in place action, this is pretty easy to walk, you just twitch, twitch, twitch. Like I can close my eyes and walk this bait and it'll just walk by itself. So that's what you'll see like some of these bigger popping style baits. Um, like this cover pop right here, they're more for walking poppers. Like they're walking, they, they sort of stay in place. It's a little bit harder to to master that, but again, this one walks like insanely good. So like, and it but it, and it stays in the strike zone. So like this is like a really good bait to throw like for bluegills, like when the bluegill are spawning and the bass trap are shallow, keeping in the strike zone, that's sort of the scenario on that. So that's sort of like an overview on the popping style baits. And we'll dive deeper into some of the stuff here as we go. Um, so next on the list, I'm going to do walking, walking style, um, walking baits like spooks and, and your skitter walks right here. Um, a walking style bait is, is a really good in open water. So what I mean by, you know, grass flats, um, long points, schooling fish, 
typically you want one that can cast farther, that you can get that bait out there and get it over places. And because what it does walking the dog, to walk the dog, you hear that all the time. It's literally when you, you, you work this bait and you twitch, twitch, you're throwing slack at it. It's twitch, 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 twitch. You know, if you keep your eye, if you're just pulling it and not giving it slack, it's not gonna walk far. So that you twitch, let it glide, twitch, let it glide, twitch, let it glide, twitch. And then, then you get your kids, twitch, 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 twitch. And I like that one knocker, that was super loud. Like top water for the most part, I want to be pretty loud. Um, because I'm like a lot of times walking baits, like there's bass that will come up from 20 feet of water to come eat this bait. Like it's really interesting to see how, the, especially in clean water when you're talking about, you know, large mouth and spotted bass and small mouth even, like in calm days, they'll come flying up and just eat it because it's so natural. It's one of the most natural baits you can throw because they, it's sort of like, they can't tell what it is. You know, it's not below the surface. So they're just looking up there and they're seeing this thing make, you know, commotion and it just typically really just, it just gets big bites. So like, you, you know, size wise, you can sort of switch it up, but like, I mean, traditional size is, you know, like a four inch walking style bait typically is what I'll, I'll roll with. Um, and then, you know, colors, you can keep it fairly simple as well. Like, you know, you can go with bone is a very good color, uh, you know, chrome, and then like a natural translucent color, the three colors I typically will throw. But for me, it's really uh, about the fall. It's about um, grass flats. It's also about covering water. It's also about expansive areas is when I throw a walking bait, like expansive flats, two foot of, three foot of water, four foot of water, places like where the water clarity is not the greatest, but like, you know, foot of visibility, two foot of visibility, where I can pull them up off the grass, it's great. And then of course, highland reservoirs where I can actually pull those fish out of 10, 20, 30 feet of water. You know, if you're going from the bank or you're fishing from a boat, you can pull fish up with a top water walking bait like this right here. Maybe, and it's gonna pull them, it's have more drawing power than something smaller because just the profile and the sound and everything else. So. That's when a walking bait is really a, a, a killing killer on that side of things. Um, jumping into a, a little bit of, uh, I'm gonna start over here. Jumping into a little bit of a, a bait that um, doesn't get a lot of play unless you're in some certain regions of the country, Florida, um, South Georgia. You know, there's a lot of uh, popularity around top water, this prop bait. And this is a prop bait, and you get that name by the props that it has on either the front and or the back. Um, and this one has both. So there's some prop baits out there that have a single prop. The more props you have on there, the more commotion you make. And so this is sort of a very similar um, time frame of like the chugging poppers because these both, the goal with this is you twitch and you let them sit. So the cool thing about a, a, a prop bait is it's and it just sprays and you let it sit. And I go twitch, twitch, let it sit. It's really good around the spawn. Typically you see a lot of people throw it in Florida around the spawn. Um, that's definitely when you see it the most, but it's something that works really well in, I mean, in Mississippi, San, you know, uh, Texas, um, all the way through, all the way up there, you know, Tennessee, up north, they just don't, it's probably one of a very underutilized. Now there's, this is more of a long, prop bait, there's shorter prop baits that are different that people throw during bluegill spawn and stuff like that as well. They're dip, but just giving you an overview of what it really is. And so a lot of times my cadence is, is fairly similar. It's twitch, twitch, and it goes quack, quack, stop. And it, what, where your action is is the blades and then it rolls. So you have the flash of the actual bait and then you get the blades turning as well. And that is enough it irritates the fish a lot of times and that's when you generate the bite. So that's when I throw a prop bait, most time around the spawn. It's really good grass, expansive grass flats where this is like in the fall when they're looking for bait fish. This is more so staying in the strike zone, isolated pieces of cover or in pockets and stuff like that where the bass are spawning. If you feel like you wanna throw something a little bit different, a prop bait can be a really good one. Uh, this is a little Rapala extra prop right here, just for your guys' reference if you were looking for, to understand which one that was. Um, so that's that's sort of the prop bait side of things. Um, old school, old school. Oh, this so good, it's caught a lot of fish over the years. And it's, it's one of the baits, I, I even more so than this one, I feel like it gets less attention than ever before. And that's a floating rapala. It's like a, just a floating jerkbait, okay? 
So the, the whole key with a floating jerk bait, it's the same time frame as this guy right here, a spawn time frame. Like you have selections of toms when I'll throw this and this and this. But the difference between this is it does, when you jerk it, it goes down and it darts and it comes back up. So like a lot of times when I'm having the fish blow up on this and not get the bait, that's when I sort of know, hey, I might need to throw the floating jerk bait. I jerk it down there and it has action. It goes, I might go jerk, jerk, and it goes down, and then I let it float back up. Jerk, jerk, float back up. And that irritate, it's st still a strike zone thing. You know, I'm throwing it around, you know, around cover up shallow. It's not, disadvantages is not gonna be really good around, you know, a lot of cover. I'm throwing it around areas where, you know, if you're around boat docks or places where you can cast this, it's not gonna cast super well on that side, but it's also really good for creeks and ponds and places like that, really good bait. And one that's has not seen a lot of attention. Actually, a lot of people don't even have them in their boats. So that's why I recommend this because I think that fishing sort of a deal where the bass, like everything goes back to what it like it once was. Like there was like it, if an action really caught a lot of fish back in the day, it probably still catches them now. It's just we forget about it, and then it everything rotates back in, sort of like fashion or something like that. You know. It's like, you know, it comes back in and those bass, they just haven't seen it for a while. And I think that's why a float and jerk bait is sort of underutilized and it can be really good to, to throw that bait. So you can switch him up on that one. You might want to throw him on typically all these baits. I'm either throwing on monofilament or I'm throwing on braid, um, depending on which one it is. So they're just sort of giving you guys that. I'll throw a 40 pound braid, typically like a suffix, uh, 832 braid is what I'm going to throw. But like with these guys right here, you're gonna have to make sure, probably I'm gonna probably throw this one on, on monofilm, like 15 pounds of good in between line size when selecting, you know, for, for a top water line. So that's what I'm, I'm gonna roll with most of the time. So that gives you a little bit of overview on the, the floating Rapala jerkbait, floating jerkbaits. Um, another, ooh, 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 ooh. okay, so we talked about this guy, we sort of ran it in there. Um, one of the baits that I throw a lot um, in a scenario of, of like this one's, I don't want to keep saying this, but it's like, it's again, it's a bait that's not used a lot and people don't necessarily understand it really well. And it's really can be an unbelievable topwater bait. And that is called a wake bait. Okay, so this one right here is a wake bait. And what it does is it just sort of, you reel it. It's a slow wind and it just sort of wakes on top of the surface. And the advantage of this bait more than anything is it's actually the best top water to throw in water temperature at the, at the coldest water temperature. It's also really good when you want to be subtle. Okay, so not this and not walking aggressively. It's just real natural and it just has this and it stays on top of the water. If you ever see a minnow swim and he's swimming through there, he just has a really good like V like that if he's on top of the water and it's a flat, calm day, has a little V. That's sort of the imitation of this bait. It just sort of literally just rolls. It just has that really unique action. And it's one of my favorite baits to throw when they're being really goofy on other top waters. If they're really good pre-spawn and later in the fall when you want when the water temperature slows down. I've caught fish on this, on this bait right here in 49 degree water temperature. So I told you how, mid 50s is sort of when I start, but this one right here is if there is a top water that I'm gonna throw and you see fish breaking in the winter time or like colder water temperatures, a wake bait is a must have. And so only top water that I always have in my boat in the winter months. So that's why I sort of keep him, uh, you know, typically that 15 pound monofilament is sort of my go-to line for that or 14 pound monofilament is what I'm gonna roll with, shad patterns and, and that's sort of the, the game plan behind him. So I had to sort of go over that. Um, next on the list is, is plopping style baits, okay? So a plopping style bait is, is a bait that just, um, what it's sort of advantage is cast and reel, um, works well for creeks and ponds and places like that as well. You'll see that little plopper style, little prop on the back. And it's really started as a musky lure actually. Um, back in the day. And so what it what it just does, it has that little, it's pretty straightforward. Plop, 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 It has that real good um, sound to it and, and it's a good cast and reel. 
Um, typically, this is good for covering water. Um, disadvantage is cover with this bait. So I, I sort of, these sort of go hand in hand. Um, where a buzz bait, I throw around a lot of wood. This guy's really a lot better in open water or a place that there's not a lot of cover. It's very similar as far as both of the sound attracts the fish, um, but, but you know, it's a little bit different. You know, grass, you know, obviously not the greatest in grass and, you know, emerging grass. You wouldn't want to necessarily throw this guy, but that's sort of the scenario of when I throw, I'll throw this guy um, over a buzz bait when I'm talking about straight banks, you know, 45 degree banks. Um, but when I'm talking about cover, I'm going to throw that buzz bait. So that's sort of like, I sort of look at those both go hand in hand. And that's sort of like when I think of that, I'll throw that on like a 40 pound braid or a 30 pound braid or something like that typically, or you could throw it on monofilament. Like I said, monofilament, it's, it's easy going, but popping style baits are really easy to use because you just cast them out, they reel them in and they do float where a buzz bait, you have to pull them up. So that's sort of a, just an overview on, on, on that guy. Um, and then sort of the last but not least in the, in the grand scheme of it all is, is frogs. Like, you know, we can, there's more, I mean, there's things that I could bring up as far as other top waters and we can go on and on and on and on and on. But I wanted to give you guys as a viewer uh, and a good over, uh, overview of what top waters are and like sort of my, my mindset behind them. Um, so you got top water frogs. And I have like, I think five, six boxes of frogs, way too many. You don't want, you do not have to complicate it that much. And that's why, I'm, but that's just how, it's how I, I have, I have mat frogs. I have, um, open water frogs. I have finesse frogs. I have, you know, pad frogs. I have this, that, and the other, I have all this stuff. But at the end of the day, I can simplify it to two. And that's what I'm, but I, you know what I'm saying? So you can take this and, and I mean, I mean, I have, 30 top water boxes. I literally do probably 20 top water boxes. I love top waters, but it can be simplified a lot more. So that being said, in the frog realm of thing, there's two different types for the most part. You have a popping frog, okay, like this guy right here. And then you have like a normal regular frog, like the, this is actually a terminator frog, um, like a you know, like typical spro, like a pointed nose frog. So. The advantage is these both are typically heavier cover. The advantage is to be able to utilize this in heavy cover. All these baits right here are not that great in cover. So these guys right here are really well, really good for one, fishing over emergent vegetation. So grass that you see that scum grass on your pond, your lakes, or you're able to put this out there and displace water and get those bites. But it's also really good for like skipping underneath underhangs it's just a really versatile lure that you just have to sort of, i i you got to have you know when you're fishing fishing out there all across the country catching a lot of really nice fish um the the differences um between a regular style pointed nose frog and a popping frog is this guy does displace more water so if, it, if i'm fishing open water um and the say the wind gets up a little bit i might pick up the popping style frog and I'm not using it as in a chugger, like bloop, bloop, bloop. I, there's some people that do that and they catch the heck out of them on it. So I don't personally use it that way. I use it as more of the cover pop aspect. So he's a very good walking frog because he has that mouth. He's going to help me walk that frog a little bit better. Okay. So that's sort of the scenario. I'm throwing slack to it pop and it's sort of displacing water. And so that's sort of the advantage. Open water, I throw this guy more. The disadvantage with this frog right here, the style is when you get into pads, because that mouth is open and, and like heavy grass, he's gonna get caught on those pads a little bit more. And that, my friends, is where this little dude comes in. So this is a little bit smaller frog overall. They're, they get a little bit larger and stuff, but the narrow nose right here on this, on this guy, allows for you to go through vegetation and not disrupt it and ultimately so you it's still lifelike to the fish so like the problem is if you get caught on a pad with this guy and there's a bass underneath it and it just trashes the whole pad it messes up the bite where this guy's going to go through there slither through that pad and that bass is falling on him and he eats it because it's it's obviously making a disturbance but it's still subtle it's not it's not going to be disrupting the grass too much. So that's what I'm throwing, you know, 
this kind, this kind of frog. Or when it's calmer out in open water and I don't want the, the more aggressive action. So that's sort of the scenarios when I use you know, one over the other. And, and then with that little that little frog right there, he's um, this is actually like a Terminator walking frog junior. I like that as well when they're like even on a shad spawn, if they're spawning in the grass or something like that. So that's really like the overview on, on each of these. You can, I'm gonna keep this very simple on, on as far as uh, rod selection. Um, I recommend like a seven foot medium heavy is a, is a very good rod if you're trying to do most of these techniques. I think the only one I probably would change out is maybe the frog. If you're gonna do that, maybe a seven, you know, seven two heavy action with a faster tip is what I would recommend. But keeping it simple and going through and talking about why and when is important. And I want you all to know like, I'm not saying this is all perfect. I'm not gonna say that. It's just my opinions on it. And somebody might say, hey, you know, this is, that's completely the wrong way that I do it. And that's what makes fishing so much fun is because there's multiple ways to use a lure and, and, and your way might be the right way that works for you and my way this is what works for me. So I'm just speaking from experience and this is sort of my top water collection to simplified, um, but giving you a good overview of how to select the correct lure and how to select the correct top water in the moment.